Welcome to NCAP Shorts Wisdom During the Pandemic. We're hearing from Valerie Bradley, President Emerita of the Human Services Research Institute. Valerie, what do person-centered thinking, planning, and practice look like in a time of crisis? You know, person-centered thinking, practices, planning is really even more important uh, during a crisis. Um, in my view, uh, person-centered practices are really all about empathy. Uh, and empathy really gives us insight uh, into what other people are feeling and thinking. Um, and as we know, with social isolation, uh, our folks people with disabilities are going to have particular challenges, um, just like the rest of us, although they may be even more exaggerated. Uh, given their circumstances. So we need to understand whether people, uh, some of whom are going to be missing friends and social connections, uh, some of whom um, will be deeply mourning the loss of a job, which was um, where they got their own personal identity. Uh, certainly many of them will also be feeling anxiety about their health, their circumstances, and certainly anxiety about the health of those that they care about, their families who they may not be able to see. Um, so that empathy that comes with person-centered thinking uh, really puts us in a position to develop strategies uh, for each person uh, that provide the kind of sustenance and reassurance that they need uh, during this period of time. How do we hold on to and maybe even promote person-centered thinking, planning, and practice at this time? Well, Person-centered practices um, really help us to devise strategies uh, that are tailored to each individual. Um, as I mentioned, each person who's uh, facing the isolation of social distancing is going to be experiencing it differently. Uh, some people may be uh, depressed because they're not in contact with therapists or staff who may be at home because they're themselves in quarantine. Um, so it really is important um, to have strategies that are tailored to each individual. Uh, I think particularly about um, people's relationships. You know, as we know, people with disabilities have fragile relationships in social uh, circles as, uh, as, as it is. So being able to help them maintain those contacts during this period of time uh, is really important. Coming up with you know, creative solutions, uh, using technology to help people uh, maintain uh, the, those connections with friends and, and loving relationships. Um, also helping them stay connected to their communities if there are community meetings that go on virtually. Um, also helping to understand uh, families are going to be particularly stressed during this period of time, uh, anticipating what they're going to need. Um, and, you know, person-centered practices uh, aren't one and done. People's needs are going to change. We don't, need, we don't know how long, you know, this isolation is going to continue. Uh, but I'm convinced that people's needs are going to change as well as time goes on. So person-centered thinking, practices, planning is even more crucial now than than it is uh, in whatever normal times are these days. How do we balance the collective public health concerns with the individual well-being that you're talking about? Well, I think we're all aware that uh, many of the people being served uh, in public disability systems um, already have particular health vulnerabilities, which put them in the category of people we have to be very concerned about. Uh, people with underlying uh, conditions like diabetes, hypertension, um, obesity, et cetera, which puts our folks, uh, some of them, at, at significant risk. So all those public health protections are important. Um, but again, we also need to understand uh, what's happening within the situations people find themselves. Isolation, as we know, um, can sometimes lead to abuse and exploitation uh, because we are not in a position to monitor some of these residential arrangements uh, as we were before the uh, pandemic uh, came upon us. Uh, we need to be alert to uh, the possible signs that, that abuse may be taking place. Uh, we need to even be collecting some data during this period of time. So 
so we can really understand what's happening with individuals in these circumstances. So yeah, public health is certainly a concern, but we also need to understand what the fallout potentially might be uh, for people who are getting supports, either in their families, uh, who are also stressed, or in residential situations, or in their own apartments. Last question, what lessons can we apply from persons that are thinking flooding in practice to get through this time of pandemic? Well, I think we really need to rethink how we do planning. Um, certainly in the last couple of years with hurricanes and, and other major weather events, we've gotten you know, better at really thinking about uh, emergency preparedness. This is a different kind of emergency, uh, one I don't think we've anticipated, uh, one that will stretch on for uh, a number of months. So really understanding through the planning process uh, what um, supports need to be put in place if something like this happens again. What lessons can we draw from this period of time to make sure that when we think about the trajectory of somebody's life, uh, we also are thoughtful about what to do in cases of a longer term isolation for people. I think charting the life course, which really helps us understand the trajectory of somebody's uh, life, uh, gives us some lessons there in how to think about uh, the need for supports, not only when things are going well, but uh, when things uh, may deteriorate in ways that we didn't anticipate. Um, I think it's also very important for us uh, who care about person-centered planning, thinking, practices, to document the kinds of things that went right during this period of time. What lessons can we draw from the interventions we did make? Where were the innovators? Um, where were people really uh, practicing these kinds of uh, uh, approaches in, in ways that really enhance well-being uh, and minimize the, the uh, risk that people were experiencing. Thanks, Valerie Bradley, Human Services Research Institute.